right, welcome back to the podcast this week. It's episode three, and with me today for my show host, I have our very own Michael Licatino. Howdy, and, howdy. And of course, myself, Coach Nick. Uh, today in the background here, we see we have some nice sample products of stuff that you can find on sale in the CFP retail area today. Um, first thing we're going to bring up is we have September events that we're going to run through really quick and other upcoming events besides that. So what we should see is the following. So we're going to have the Spinal Hygiene with Dr. Chris coming up 9-8. And then we have the Labor Day Hero Wad. So I cut out the square because we had the wrong date on there. But it's 9-3, Monday 9-3, and the only class we're going to have that day is at 10 a.m. Uh, new yoga class schedule starts 9-1. You see the Saturday sculpt, sculpt at 11.15 a.m., Sunday yin at 10.30 a.m., Tuesday mobility express 6.45 p.m., Thursday active recovery at 6.45 p.m. Remember, yoga classes will be four weeks on and two weeks off. Uh, going forward here and we'll make sure to make that really clear and announce it um, Schedule a free nutrition appointment with Jen or Julie. You can do that uh, at cfpfit.com And you'll just go down to the grace tab and and it says what does it say? Just um, sign up for your no sweat intro today. I think yep, free and nutrition then intro. Yep. Sip, and then you go right in there for the free nutrition appointment sign up uh, if you're looking to really further your gains um, And see more results from the exercise you're already doing do it Super important. Yeah, and if you are uh, not quite sure what to expect from one of those nutrition intros, just ask one of the coaches or mm -hmm. pull Julie or Jen aside and ask them what's involved with that. You can also scroll back through uh, the CFP Fitness Facebook page and take a look at uh, some of the results highlights from some of our nutrition clients oh i love that yeah, yeah they're awesome yeah yeah so people doing some really amazing things uh, with our nutrition program so if you're not quite sure if that is something that you want to engage in ask us talk to us because it really is the next step for a lot of people yeah um can't stress that enough yeah. i agree 100 percent with everything coach michael just said uh, other upcoming events beyond september here we have Minnesota Open Weightlifting Championships, October 20th and the 21st. This is going to be our fifth year anniversary of holding this event. If you don't know what this is, we host one of the, if not the largest weightlifting competitions in I'd the say, entire Midwest. I'd say the. Yeah, it's, I, I like to think it's the too, but I'll say that and I'll find somebody who has one more person. But the yeah. biggest event in the Midwest for we weightlifting. We could maybe get some Russian signups. Some Russian signups would be good. Also, so, what would be good is a lot of gym volunteers. There you go. Okay. All right. <laughs> Halloween party, Club 83, October 27th. Turkey throwdown, Saturday, November 17th. The sign-up is up. Remember, really, the main requirements to do well at the turkey throwdown is a slightly inappropriate team name and three other people to compete with. Exactly. <laughs> so, going on here. It is time for the most important part of the show, and that's going to lag behind for a second or two. The most important part of our show is the question and answer period. Hadouken! I'm ready. Boom. So we're going to bring in a special guest today via FaceTime. Let's see if we can pull him up here. Perfect. I think we got him. Let's see where he is. There he is. We got part of him anyways. Oh. <laughs> now if we're going to be able to hear him, I'm not quite sure, but... So we have Josh Grinnell with us today, and we're going to start our question and answer. We'll see what it looks like up here in the corner. So stay with us. This is a new one we're trying to do. I wonder if he's on a pretty good lag. He might be. Yeah. 
So, here's what we've got for our first question today. Um, we've got what got you into CrossFit and what kept you there? Um, Ooh, that's a good question. I, I'll start off with this one. Um, a long time ago, some of you might know this. I think a lot of you know this if you've been in the gym long enough. My background, I originally was just the Olympic weightlifting coach. I coached. I got hired to coach three classes a week in the evenings. And, uh, and uh, anyways, from that, all of a sudden, uh, uh, this became my full-time job. And at first, I'm going to be honest, I didn't know very much about CrossFit when I was coaching these three Olympic weightlifting classes. But what really kept me here is, besides the community and all the members, is all the continuing education and learning that I ended up picking up from CrossFit and these new training ideas and whatnot. Um, and I just never left. I mean, it's too cool of an environment. And it's just, I've never felt more welcome in a gym than when I've been in a CrossFit gym. Yeah, I like the, I like that story. I like your story about how you got into CrossFit. Mine's uh, a little bit different. I actually was looking for something to supplement uh, triathlon training at the time. I was oh. doing long distance tries, uh -huh. and I needed something to make me stronger because I literally was falling apart every time I raced. Really? On, on the run, yeah. I couldn't make it through the long runs. So I needed something to make me a little stronger and uh, found CrossFit uh, gym. This was when we were living in Little Rock, actually. Sure. Yeah, so I found a CrossFit gym. Uh, they had just opened. I think when I might have been like the third member at, at this CrossFit gym in Little Rock, which still, <laughs> by the way, is still going. Really? Uh, yeah, so that was really fun. I ended up getting completely hooked. I had never touched a barbell in my life except for bench press in high school. Really? Yeah, and uh, just yeah, I fell in love with the movements and the high intensity workouts. Uh, met a, a guy in class there who ended up becoming a really good friend of mine and boom, that was it. Huh. Yeah. That is awesome, man. We're going to see if we can bring Josh back in here for last try. I can see him in the corner. Josh, can you hear us? Uh, sort of. Not really. What about now? Audio's really jumpy. Uh-oh. Well, did you see the question below? We can hear you. Josh, what got you into CrossFit and what kept you there? What's up? What got you into CrossFit and what kept you there? Oh, yeah. It might be at the connect. Uh, what got you into CrossFit and what kept you there? Mm hmm. Um, night shifts, the movie, the 300. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, so night shifts, the movie, the 300. Um, Rue, Yori, and I started doing CrossFit at the Heli Living Center, 2008. And then, uh, we did the, the, did the main site wad, so whatever it said we did. <laughs> um, really warm up every day. Um, and nine months later, we were in really good shape, and we were still doing it. So, so this is great. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Next question. Uh oh. So. If you were to become a world champion arm wrestler, if I want to become a world champion arm wrestler, is it possible to follow Sylvester Stallone's training plan from over the top, or is it only successful if your kid is kidnapped? So I had to do a little research and refresh myself on over the top, but I did find it, and here is a quick clip from it. Let's see if we can get this to load up. So Over the Top is this great arm wrestling movie um, that Sylvester Stallone starred in back in the day.
And right now, I don't think it's playing, but we'll see if it comes up in just a second. Uh, if you want to become a world arm wrestling champion, I'm sure it's possible to follow his chain training program and to do it. And I think this is Ryan Seafelt's question of the week. Um, I would have guessed that if your kid was kidnapped, you'd have a lot more urgency yeah. to compete and succeed at this. No, I think this is absolutely something that you would have to have that bit of urgency because uh, I, I just can't see that that one being committed to that one-sided training all the time. Oh, yeah. It would be tough. It would be super tough. So I think we have a small clip from it playing here right now, but I think it's just more commercials from... YouTube. We'll let that play. We'll continue on with some more questions, and we'll come back to the over the top here in just a second. Hmm, this looks like a new preview for a new movie. That's okay. So... She's pulling these questions out now. We're going to pull that one off there because that's not working right now, but that's okay. So, next question. Hmm, <laughs> There it is. Okay, here's a really good question I was excited for this week. When is the best time to take supplements? Great question. Branch chain amino acids, creatine, protein, etc. We get this question a lot mm -hmm. in the gym. We get this question all the time. Um, I was really excited for this one this week. Uh, first things first, and we touched on this a little bit earlier. I think before, I think we lost Josh, that's okay. Uh, before we did this, or before you get into any kind of supplementation, um, the best thing first is to make sure that your actual nutrition is in check, that you're eating real foods, that you have that on a lock first. Definitely. You cannot supplement away bad nutrition. I mean, hence the name supplement. It's in yeah. supplementation yeah. to already what you're doing. So if you've already seen results, you're eating at least three square meals a day. Maybe you've come to see one of our nutrition coaches. Right? And you have everything locked in, and based on maybe their recommendation, on your research, you're looking for something, you know, maybe to put some extra calories in. Uh, you're looking for a healthy post-workout snack. If your first urge maybe is like, oh, I'm going to stop a quick trip on the way home from the gym and pick up my favorite candy bar or favorite protein bar, which oftentimes has as much sugar as a candy bar. Yeah. You know, something like a good protein, like an ascent, might be a great way for you to go. Yeah, and I uh, often hear people asking specific questions about um, what do I need to take based on my specific goals. Right. So what's your recommendation for someone who's just looking for just a general protein supplement versus an, a member who's maybe looking for something that packs a little bit more punch, let's say if they were – if they were training for a specific powerlifting event or a competition coming up, is the is there a difference? Should they be taking something some, something different? I think I don't really think so. Yeah. I think it still comes down to your basic nutrition. Uh, are you getting are you getting enough vegetables, proteins, carbohydrates, all those good things in your diet? Because if you're not, that's, that's the first issue because these aren't going to help that. Mm -hmm. um, second off, I think it's just like our fitness levels. It's not, you know, just because, you know, we have a, a, a you know, a powerlifting athlete versus somebody who's just looking for general physical fitness. It's yeah. not, it's not this person needs something special versus this person. It's to, you know, it's, it's the degree of it. Yeah. You know, if I'm going for maximal lifts or I'm, you know, a co I consider myself a hobbyist or a competitive CrossFit athlete mm -hmm. and I'm doing some pretty intense workouts, you know, uh, of six to eight sessions a week, then I really have to have my nutrition on point. Mm. And I'm sure I'm going to need to have to find a way to get some extra calories into my routine. For example, um, a healthy protein shake. Yeah. And that's what I would start because protein, so branched amino acids, when you break it down, those are just the building blocks of, of protein and whatnot. So you're actually getting BCAAs when you're taking a healthy protein supplement. Mm -hmm. 
So if you think you need to supplement more of those, you could take the BCAA pills. But I would start first and foremost, if you have to take a supplement or and you know you got your nutrition on lock, I would start with a good, clean protein. It's hard to go wrong there. Yeah. And we recommend that uh, members here are getting a quality source of protein and carbohydrates within 30 minutes of every workout. Yes. If that is your protein and carbohydrate of choice, let's say it's a, um, a half a banana smothered with uh, the appropriate amount of almond butter. One thumb. Good. Thumb or if, less. If that's, if that's a, um, a, an Ascent or SFH protein shake, then also great. So <laughs> there's more than one way to go about getting that source of protein and carbohydrate, just that it has to, or that at least we recommend, that it comes within 30 minutes of your workout. Right. So that's why you often see a lot of members here bringing in their shaker bottles, or maybe they have a bag of protein, or right. a snack that they go to right after the workout. And this is especially important if you are working out and then heading off to work. Yep. And perhaps when you get to work, you get to the office, you don't have any time to eat, um, then you definitely need to be thinking about bringing something to the gym or having it in the car on the way to work. That's awesome. Yeah, and I couldn't agree more with that. I think there's a couple different ways to answer this question. You know, when is the best time to take supplements? Michael's answer right there, 30 minutes post-workout, okay? Or within 30 minutes, that's the gym's recommendation. Uh, I also will throw on top of there, there's nothing wrong with, you know, having a protein shake for breakfast. Mm -hmm. If you're an on-the-go person and you struggle to get your three meals in or to eat throughout the day consistently, to start a healthy habit like that, maybe it's taking an extra scoop of protein in the morning yeah. on the go to encourage Because I know a lot of times I've heard from people, ah, I just can't do the whole breakfast thing. I don't, you know, mm -hmm. don't get yeah. up in time. I'm off to work. I take my kids. Sometimes on the go, a protein shake is better than nothing. Yep, totally agree. I mean, you got you got to fuel the body with good stuff, good and clean as, stuff. As far as creatine goes, I don't think we're going to get too deep on that in this episode, most likely, but. I, I don't know if it's necessary to supplement with creatine because mm -hmm. if you're eating good sources of lean red meat, you're actually getting creatine. Mm -hmm. So I would start there first. Again, get your diet in check first and then add in the good extra sources of protein 30 minutes post-workout. So maybe we don't want to dive too much into creatine, but could, no. you, could you tell us just a little bit about like what sure. is creatine? So creatine essentially is a, it's a supplement. It's very popular in the sports world. Uh, very controversial, as you know, but there's more and more good research coming out on it every single day. I don't have any of that research pulled up, but there's a lot of benefits to essentially strength gains mm -hmm. and lean muscle mass gains mm -hmm. with the supplementation of extra creatine in your diet. Um, <clears throat> so the benefits here is that creatine essentially allows your muscles to, to produce extra ATP, which is which is energy for your muscles to right. contract quickly, yeah. right? Or to contract. So really, really helpful if you're doing a lot of strength lifts, which we do a few of those here at Progression mm -hmm. Fitness. Mm -hmm. um, so where I'm not going to tell you, you're not going to see a gain from this if you take it for two to three months and then you don't ever take it again. Mm -hmm. This is something that should consistently be in your diet. Hence, good sources of lean red meat. Right. You are already consistently getting sources of creatine in your diet. Um, this is to up that a little bit. Um, and, and, and it's one of those things, again, if you don't have a hard time getting good sources of protein, I really wouldn't worry about adding creatine yeah. into your diet. Now, if you don't eat protein, like maybe if you're a vegetarian or vegan, that might be something to think about mm -hmm. as a supplement. Um, but anyway, so the thought here is supplementing creatine, it kind of compounds over time. It's like, it's like that old example of if you throw a penny every day in an interest, ca interest account for the next how many years you're gonna end up with X amount of money, right? It adds right. up. So yeah. if you consistently are supplementing with creatine over time, you're gonna have the quick fire energy from your muscles mm. to finish maybe an extra rep or two in your sets than you normally would have, or, or to finish them stronger. And so think about that. If you make if you make 10 extra lifts every week that you maybe didn't have the energy to before, mm -hmm. all right, or the ability to before, well, holy cow, that adds up over yeah. time. Sure. In building lean muscle, and getting stronger, of course, which are all good results from that. So, that's what we got today. Let's go to the next question. And please feel free to ask questions online. Michael is checking that throughout here. And if we see any questions in the comments, we'll answer them as we go. All right. 
Lots of us know each other from the gym and tend to base our day around going there. What's your favorite not fitness related activity that might surprise others? Ooh. That's kind of personal. <laughs> I think I mean, we'll try to keep it PG. I mean, for the... don't we just don't we just work out? That's all we do. <laughs> yeah, we live here. I live up above. Uh, yeah, up above don't the bathroom. You, you know. Tell oh shoot. But anyways, <laughs> but anyways, um, I don't know if this is really a surprise, but people might know that I'm into golf outside of the gym a little yeah. bit. Yep. I'm trying to think of maybe something a little better too. Michael, what do you got? Uh, chickens. Chickens. Oh, please go into this. This is good. Go into it a little bit at least. Yeah. So well, yeah, we talk about this. There's frequently. a lot of chicken coop stories. Yeah. So we we uh, we got uh, started our chicken flock about uh, 18 months ago, and we started with four chickens. We were quickly down to two, and then have now come back up to 10. And we just got six chicks, so we're we're going to be up to 16 in our flock soon. But we, we had a, a small chicken coop. And uh, with the addition of all these uh, new chicks to the flock, we've had to get we had to get a new house, a new chicken house. I mm. won't even use the word coop because it's <laughs> more, house. It's more like a hotel. I've seen some of these these chicken coops. Yeah, and it looks like it could be a tiny home for somebody to live in if they really tried. Yeah, no. It, it, is that the it level really we're is. talking about here? Yep, it's probably, <laughs> as, it's probably as big as my college dorm room. Oh my gosh! But yeah, well, maybe this is a great time for me to give a public shout out to sure. to to the guys who helped. Yeah, do it up. Uh, my dad, uh, first and <laughs> foremost. Uh, my neighbor Philip, and then well, we had uh, Tony. Mm-hmm. Me and Tony drove over there to Wisconsin to get this chicken hotel. Oh my god! Um, Sam B. Chicken Sam uh, was over at my house to help unload it. And uh, Brad, I mean, we couldn't have done it without Brad and his tow truck. God, nicest guy ever. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, public shout out to those guys. Thank you very much. Hey, Jeremy, I saw your comment in there. But, um, yeah, that is, that is cool. That's a way cooler side hobby than golf. <laughs> I don't think so. Next, next, yeah. <laughs> it's not as glorious as it seems. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> not even a little bit. Okay, finish. This is a really, really good one. Finishing last in a wad. It's something that is hard for lots of people, especially new members. What's the best way to explain to people from the finishing la- that finishing last is not bad and no one's judging you? This is, I really am glad that this got asked. Um, I'll start out with a few thoughts on it. Uh, the really, really cool thing about CrossFit, and this is one of the first things that, that pulled me in early on uh, when I first started to coach here, even just as a weightlifting coach, as I mentioned earlier, several, you know, five, six, seven years ago, um, everybody finishes together. I, obviously, there's a person who's last done in the workout. Yeah. But you might have noticed coaches like, hey, don't put your equipment away. And we're not trying to be jerks to you, but it's a sign of respect in the gym that everybody cheers everybody on until the end of the walk. That's like mm-hmm. part of the workout as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. And it's a really big part of the difference in our gym versus just going to some other com- cardio commodity where I'm sure there's nice people in other gyms. But here we are all about, and I think in any good CrossFit community, we're all about everybody finishes together. We're in this together. Um, and, the, and and there shouldn't be any judgment for that because if, if you work with your coach and you set up your workout right – you know, the best workout, uh, you're set up to get the best single workout every single day for you. And some days that might mean you finish last, mm-hmm. but you still got a great workout. Yeah, I agree. And I'll, I will add to that, to Nick's comment that um, when we're working out together as a group, we all struggle together. Yes. And that person is there with you while you're struggling. Mm-hmm. Even if that person finishes before you, um, they're still going to be with you mm-hmm. as you finish your struggle. And then I think that's such a big life lesson that you get to have here every single day. If you can look at it like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's 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 such a big life lesson that I think we could even take here. We work together. I mean, I think we have a pretty good staff uh, 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 flow here at Progression, and I think we're all really supportive of each other and what we do in our daily tasks. I think that's something that definitely bleeds over from our classes and how we coach. And I think that's something that I would really recommend you to take out into your everyday life too. Yeah, I agree. You know so, what I mean? So Josh is uh, posting some interesting comments here. Uh, and since yeah. he, he can't uh, be with us today, I'll try and, and uh, do his comments justice here. But um, there are some good questions that Josh 
posts here. Why are you finishing last? So th these are questions that this you is another could, side of it, maybe. Yeah. Th th yes, these are questions that you could ask yourself or have a conversation with a coach. Or why are you finishing last? Are you scaled appropriately for that workout? Is your intensity an issue? Mm -hmm. Meaning, um, are you are you currently capable of pushing yourself to the intensity that's required? Or maybe the intensity to which all the other athletes around you are pushing themselves. Right. And that's a whole, that's a whole probably 30 minute conversation. Yeah. Have, <laughs> yes, right? it is. So we want to make, we want to make sure that the workout written on the board, if there's 20 people, if there's 20 people in your class, yes. like, one of your goals, I know one of our goals is to make sure that those 20 people get the same or as similar of a workout as possible. Yeah, that's a really important to, thing to us as coaches, for sure. So if it's, a, if it's supposed to be a 10-minute workout and somebody takes 20 minutes, then we have totally missed the boat there. Oh, yeah, we take, we take this as a huge failure. Yeah. If, we have, if we have somebody who is seven minutes past, and this happens all the time, I'm sure you've seen it, you know, where everybody else has finished. As a coach, I know I'm thinking, I'm thinking immediately, oh, God. How did I screw up this person's intensity? Yeah. So I'm not disappointed with you if you finish last at all. I'm more thinking about myself and how I didn't set up that workout correctly for everybody. Sure. And I'm going to come at this from one different angle, and that is that it could be that finishing last is part of your training. It's yeah. part of reaching your goals. Mm. So let's put this example out there. Let's say that you're working with an athlete, we're working with an athlete who is trying to get stronger or maybe is trying to move a heavier load for the first time in a workout. Could we have right. a good workout we could pair that with, like a DT or like a, like a DT? Or we just did Grace do DT? Yeah, know. or Grace. Yeah, yeah. So I maybe um, maybe you're you're an athlete who's trying to move an RX weight for the first time in something like Grace, or you have communicated. One thirty-five, ninety-five. Yeah, you've communi communicated to the coach that you're going to try and go ten pounds heavier in this Grace than last time. All right, and that finishing last is very appropriate in this scenario right because you're trying something new mm -hmm. it's a new weight it's uncharted territory for you and actually that's part i think of growing as an athlete is being able to metabolize that into your ego and just say hey it's not a big deal where i finish in today's grace is not a big deal because i know that in terms of my own goals, I'm taking a step forward. If I finish this today at the heavier weight yeah. than the last time, I have literally set a PR. Yeah, absolutely. I had somebody do that today over at our at, at, at uh, Western Digital. We had somebody do a heavier DT. Look up DT if you haven't seen it before. <laughs> Killer workout. Five rounds, 12 deadlifts, uh, nine hang power cleans, and six push jerks. Yeah. And they did 10 pounds heavier in DT. And he told me, he goes, Nick, um, I'm going to finish... I finished it last time in nine minutes at 115 pounds. Yeah. And in you know you recommended that it, it should, should take anywhere from around 12 to 15 minutes today. I'm like, yep. It was I'm going to try 125. Yeah. And and I'm like, let's do it. And he finished at like 13 and a half minutes perfectly. Yeah. And he had right the, the best workout awesome. ever. Yeah. And I I got so jacked. And everybody else had finished before him. He was one of the last finishers, but it was it was great. It was yeah. fine because it was still a PR. Definitely. And on the other end of a spectrum, if you're finishing last and it's it's not a PR and you're dragging behind and we touched on this a little bit, then we, you know, some days you do got to look at yourself and be like, hey, <laughs> I overestimated that one. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's going to happen. Yeah. I've some got, time here. I've got a great story uh, about do it. one of my members from one of my classes. And, and uh, when, when this member first started, uh, they were always finishing last. And yeah. It, and it really, you could see it negatively affected them. Oh, yeah. And it was hard. It was mm -hmm. hard for this person to come to class and and every day know that the likelihood was high that they were going to finish last. Oh, man. And so we had some conversations, me, me and this member, and um, we're able to push through and they kept coming to class right. and seeing strength gains and gains in overall fitness and general preparedness. And now that person is finishing middle of the pack or better. So sometimes it just takes a little time. Oh, yeah. Especially if you're a new person coming in. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like you're going to get your butt kicked for the first couple months for sure. <laughs> Don't. And, and I think to go along with that, and you learn this. I'm sure this person figured this out. But, but your, your PRs are your PRs. 
fast is relative to you, heavy is relative to you. It's all relative to you and your abilities every single day that you're here in the gym. Yeah. I can't stress that enough. That's, yeah. That was really good. That was a good question. Let's see what's next. Oh, here's a good one. I think this is a, just about our last one. I'm interested in the CrossFit Level 1 cert. Is it worth it? Can you give a high-level description of what involves? I, I first just want to say every every description we give in here is high level. Yeah, there, so it's, <laughs> right? <laughs> why did you Why did you become a member of Progression if, like, you know you're getting a high level description? It doesn't get any higher than this. No, no higher. Uh, yeah. What? Let me just check this from Sarah real quick about the last question. What about AMRAP? Should people generally get around the same number of rounds? Whoa. Oh yeah, let's back up. Let's back up one second. We're gonna come to this because this one's easy. Easy to answer because we have high level descriptions on everything. Yeah. So let me just re let me just repeat this question from Sarah Shaw. Thanks, Sarah. Um, this is in reference to the last question about fin to the previous questions about finishing last in class. And she says, "What about AM reps? Should people generally get around the same number of rounds? So should people generally be getting the same score in an AM rap? Mm. What do you think? Uh, this I." I there's two different sides. There's always a different side to this, but let's end up where we finish last, right? If you're going heavier than normal and you're pushing yourself in an AMRAP, then yes, you might not get as many rounds as the next person. Yeah. But I'm also going to you know, play the other side of this too. You know, What did the coach say that day as far as intensity? Mm -hmm. right? If it's a heavy AMRAP and you're challenging yourself on the weights, yeah, you, you should expect maybe a few or less reps. Yeah. But if the coach says, if it's like a 10-minute AMRAP or less, mm -hmm. it's probably pretty high intensity, and we're probably expecting movement, uh, uh, endless movement for as long as you can. That's right. That's and, right. and again, that is going to come down to your physical level. If, if me and Michael do a wad, and it happens to be burpees and, and weightlifting, Mm -hmm. I might get Michael on the weightlifting, but if it's burpee heavy, he's probably going to kick my butt on those reps. He just can get up and down a lot faster than I can on those burpees for sure. Proximity to the floor. Exactly. Proximity to the floor. And he, he just happens to be really good at those cardio aspects where I'm good at slugging heavy weights around. Yeah. So I think it also depends on what you're good at. Is it a workout that's favorable to you and your abilities? Yeah. And, and again, what's your intensity for that day? What's the intent of the wad? I think that's so important. The intent of the wad... Um, is actually something that we've been trying to communicate mm -hmm. better. So, yeah, we're and really trying to do this that. Is, this is something from behind the scenes that we're working on as a team is to communicate from the strength programmer or the WOD programmer, yep. what's the exact intent of this WOD, mm -hmm. rev workouts, CrossFit workouts alike. What are we supposed to be doing here? And then making sure that that information is getting out to the coaches and to the membership. Yep. So communicating the intent of the WOD is is uh, really important. And, and you know, for for those of you who are in class, if it's ever unclear, please ask us. Oh yeah. Because um, I think Sarah, yeah, the the simple cut and dry answer to your question is yes. We should be pretty much the same score in an AMRAP um, where the intensity has the intent has been well defined. Yes. And that's a really good question for your coaches to be asking too. But I'll tell you what, I love questions at the whiteboard. That helps me coach better. And I'm going to be honest with you, there's days where I definitely forget things. If you've yeah. been to one of my classes, you probably can vouch for that. But if you're not sure what the intensity is, always, always, always go ask the coach. For real. What's, yeah. what, is, what is the desired intensity and result of this workout? And we'll have an answer for you every class, yeah, every time. Absolutely. And it's huge for your workouts, knowing where you should be at yeah. and how hard you should be going. Yeah. Really great question. All right. Again, don't hesitate to get your questions in here. Uh, we got a little bit more time, and if we don't have any extra questions, we'll just be at the end of the podcast. So if post any extra questions you have in the chat discussion on the side. Okay, back to our last and final question. I'm interested in the CrossFit Level 1 cert. Is it worth it? Can you give a high-level description of what it involves? Yeah, is it worth it? It probably depends a lot on the uh, person's goals. Yep. What's your goal? Is your goal to become a more informed CrossFitter? Mm -hmm. It's absolutely worth it. Oh, yeah, so much. Right? If you see this as a hobby and you want to know everything you can about CrossFit and why yeah. we do what we do, I would sign up for that level one cert five minutes ago. Absolutely. Um, if your goal is to potentially 
coach one day, then mm-hmm. it's a necessity. Yeah, you In fact, can't. You can't do this without the level one. Cert. Correct. You can't. You can't yeah. even open a gym without a level one cert. Exactly, and you know if it's uh, if you got to really look deep, I think and ex- and explore if this if CrossFit is a hobby for you mm-hmm. and you don't have any intent of coaching in the future, um, you really do need to ask yourself, you know, is it, is this something that I want to dive deep into? Because when you go to the level one cert, you're going to dive deep. It's two days of intense uh, movement education, um, CrossFit education, methodology education, all of this stuff. I would argue that I didn't even, I thought I knew what CrossFit was before my level one cert, Mm -hmm. but I didn't. Yeah, I mean the level one cert brings it. It defines it. Go. It dives deep into what it is. Yeah, and goes far beyond what you thought you were gonna get. I know. Right in in my case, I thought, hey, I'm going here to take a test, and and mm-hmm. so I can coach some classes. Yeah, it was literally hands down between weightlifting, between any cert I've been to outside of CrossFit, it was probably the most hands on, most informative informative, well-rounded cert, cert I've been to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, as far as high-level description and what it involves, so so you just chime in whenever you want. Yeah. Um, day one, you show up. Uh, first off, it's it's like a $1,000 cert, right? Yeah. So it's a $1,000 cert. You sign up online. That's how you get started. They have one a couple times a year up in the cities, always. Right. Yeah. Um, day one, you show up. And a lot of the time, the entire weekend is spent in group class lectures. Mm-hmm. And you sit at a whiteboard, and they literally take you through the level one manual, which we posted, I think, last week or the first episode in the show notes. I can post it again. Level which, one, by the yeah. way, we we also have copies. We have bound copies of that. Is here. that in the library? Uh, there may be one in the library, but there's a couple here in the office in the okay. conference room. If yeah. you're ever interested in looking at this, uh, we have some bound copies of, of the level one manual. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's a great read. Lots of information. It's, it's out of control. If you want to know, hey, am I actually doing this right? Or, hey, are the coaches lying to me? <laughs> We're not lying to you. This is how we want you to squat and press and do everything. It's, yeah. it's right out of the code source, which is the CrossFit Level 1. Yeah. I mean, theoretically, I've heard the Level 1 explained as, I mean, you literally have all the coaching tools you need. And if you're able to apply them, I mean, mm-hmm. you have everything you need from the Level 1. Yeah. The Level 2 is a different animal that maybe we, we could do a whole episode on, but that'd be a nightmare. Oh, yeah. Uh, Very but- <laughs> different type class. But then you're also getting... Uh, in level one, that also take you through nutrition. Yes. Um, uh, an introduction to programming methodology and it, how to do that. It is the smorgasbord of fitness. Yeah. It's, it's a great cert. I loved it. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, we're actually required to re up our level one cert every five years. Correct. And people commonly come back from their level one research completely jazzed up again mm-hmm. about CrossFit. Right? Oh, yeah. And, 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 and as far as it, so day one, you come in, they start with whiteboard lecture, they introduce all the level one staff. And then day one, you'll also, besides going through, and then you have your breakout groups. Mm-hmm. And they go through the foundational movements of CrossFit. Yeah. So you're with this 10 person breakout group, um, and then you have a CrossFit instructor, and they are teaching you these foundational movements. And then you're performing them. So, for example, it might be the pressing section, and they're gonna go through all the presses, which is strict press or shoulder press push press, push jerk, Mm -hmm. and you'll go through it and the coach reps you. And and for a lot of people, this is the first time they see what a CrossFit coach should be like, look like, sound like, talk like. Mm -hmm. And then typically, I don't know anybody who hasn't been tossed in the middle of one of these circles and corrected um, until it was perfect. I remember at my cert, I repeatedly had one of the coaches reminding me to squeeze my butt every time I did a push press, air squat, anything, because I wasn't opening my hips all the way. And she got me every single rep. I didn't open my hips all the way. Yeah, it was the deadlift for me. (laughs) I had to go in the middle of the circle for the deadlift. It was bad. Yeah. And then, and then, so later that day, we went through kipping pull-up progressions. One of the days, we went through strict muscle-up progressions. Mm -hmm. And then I think Olympic this, lifting. Yep, Sunday, Sunday for mine, we had Olympic weightlifting. At like I think it was like yep. the last section, and we didn't go past a PVC pipe, but they taught I think a basic top-down progression similar to what we do here. Yep. And they did it with a giant, giant, large group. And again, for me as a coach, what I I, I took away from that is like, oh, this is how you instruct the entire class on this. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at the very end of the cert, so a lot of breakout groups, a lot of whiteboard discussion, like we talked about. Uh, each day there's a group workout. 
Mm -hmm. So day one, and I don't want to spoil it in case you go into it, but it's a surprisingly difficult workout. Still one of my favorite CrossFit workouts to this day yeah. because it's so simple. And I thought, I'm going to breeze right through this. Yeah. And I was dead after the second and third rounds and thought I was about to black out after the third round of it. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a workout that I was prepared for. It's not, And I was in shape to do this workout. And it, was, and it surprised me so bad. I think if you talk to any other coaches who've done it recently, they, they still do this workout. Yeah. And, and it's three rounds. If you want to do it sometime, I'd be glad to write it down for you. Absolutely. <laughs> Nick will even do it with you. Yes. And then on Sunday, uh, we did a, I think it was a partner workout of some kind that we did. Or we counted reps for each other, something like that. Yeah. And it was like a chipper or, water, or some kind of chipper style workout. or, or it was, No, it was an AMRAP. I think it was an error. But anyways, you get two workouts, and then to end the weekend, you take like a 50-question multiple, uh, multiple choice test, and you have to pass the test to pass the course, yeah. as well as full completion or, or, or full, um, full participation the entire weekend. Yeah, so if you're looking for some uh, uh, first-hand accounts from people who have recently done this, yeah. um, Jenna Martindale, yep. Jordan Hoekstra, mm -hmm. uh, Sam, Sam B., yep. Sam B. Uh, they've all been to their level one cert recently, and don't forget too. If you are interested in this, uh, taking your level one cert, we do a coach's prep course here. Oh yeah, about once a year. Yep, um, it's something that that I've led in the past um, that we've all worked on and built up as a team. And this prep course runs seven sessions. And we cover everything that you need to know based on the feedback that I got from those uh, who have taken the prep course in the past, who've gone on to take the level one. Yeah. They said that the, our course, the progressions um, uh, course, was actually extremely good preparation. Awesome. Yeah. Can't recommend that enough. I mean, as far as the progression prep course goes, it's, it's, it's hard to find a mentorship program to better yourself as a coach. And I know I wouldn't be the coach I was today had I not had some really great mentors in the past. Mm -hmm. And that's something you can definitely get from us here at Progression. Yeah, okay. um, You have a lot of coaching experience to pick your mind from, especially, again, if you're thinking about level one. So I guess to come back to the question as a whole, is a cert worth it? If you're like just a hobbyist, a CrossFit hobbyist, you, maybe you're not looking to coaching, I, I still got to say yes. Yeah, yeah, so, especially, I mean, it, it, the money's the biggest factor and possibly right. having to travel to to, to go do some, I actually took my level one down in Houston, so mm. I combined it with a trip to see family, Fun. which was a good idea. But yeah, a thousand bucks isn't much money to you. Do it. It's awesome. Yeah. I would highly recommend it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So that was our last question. Uh, Let me check the comment section. I think we're good over here. Awesome. Sorry for the technical dif difficulties earlier on. Uh, just remember, uh, next week we'll do, we try to do this podcast. We're going to try to do it every single Wednesday as long as we can. All right. Uh, so we'll post, I'll post some show notes later on today with some of the stuff we went over and any links. I'll post a link to that over the top video I couldn't get to play, which is really crucial to understanding that question about Sylvester Stallone and arm wrestling. Arm wrestling. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a weird word. move. It's, <laughs> I'll post it in the show notes here shortly. Yeah. I'm going to relink the CrossFit level one up again to the PDF that you can find online. But again, we have those copies already bound and printed off here at the gym so yeah. don't hesitate to reach out to ask me or michael if you want to see one of those or or any of the coaching staff we can pull it out for you and you can borrow it and bring it back um and then i'll also link up uh, um, i'll see if i can find some stuff you know where i really like back to the creatine protein bcaa question yeah one of my favorite places i forgot to mention this to go look up how much should i be taking when i should be taking it yeah the mill clinic they oh, have some sure. really great online resources yeah, about, that about, yeah, weird. <laughs> <laughs> they have some really great online resources yeah. for how much of all this to take and based off of their studies and studies they've pulled. And I think they're probably pretty good yeah. people to take recommendations yeah, we should, from. We should share that. Yeah, I'll share that. I'll find a link. I know I've used that in the past to figure out how much creatine I should, been, should have been taking and whatnot because I have taken that in the past. Um, yeah, really, really good stuff. Great questions. Thank you so much. Uh, make sure to tune in next week and we will see you then. Have a great week. Woo!